Okay, what's up YouTube? This is J-Man Time, and today I have a video on some of the rarest tanks, or some of the rare tanks, that were used by the Yugoslavian military during the Second World War. That includes tanks that were used by not only the Yugoslavian army, but also by the various partisan groups that rose up in Yugoslavia during the years that Yugoslavia was occupied by the Axis powers, and it also includes tanks that were made by the pro-Axis puppet states of Croatia, for example. So here are some of the rare tanks of the Second World War that were used by the Kingdom of Yugoslavia. Now during World War II, Yugoslavia actually remained neutral at the very beginning of the war, from 1939 to 1941. But in 1941, Yugoslavia was eventually invaded by the Axis powers. Those countries included Germany, Italy, Austria, Hungary, and the state of Slovakia. And during this time period, the Yugoslavian military actually attempted to hold back the German army, but it only lasted for a short period of time before the Yugoslav army was eventually overrun. So here are some of the rare tanks that were used during the Yugoslavian campaign of World War II by the Yugoslavian army. Now the first rare tank was actually produced in Czechoslovakia, but was based on Yugoslav specifications. And that tank is the Skoda SIP, also known as the T-38. Now the SIP slash T-38 was a light tank destroyer or a tank destroying tankette which was designed between 1935 and 1938. Now the Skoda SIP is literally one of the first self-propelled anti-tank guns or self-propelled guns. This was one of the first self-propelled guns, very similar to the German Stug tank that we will later see towards the end of the Second World War. Now the SIP slash T-32 was armed with one 37mm UV-34 anti-tank gun. Its armor thickness was only 5 to 22 millimeters, and its speed was 27.9 miles per hour. Now, Yugoslavia had ordered about 20 of these tanks between 1936 and 1937, and they were delivered to Yugoslavia before the beginning of the Second World War. Now, when Germany and the Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia in 1941, these tanks actually did pretty well at first, but one of the main problems that the Yugoslav army encountered was the German Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe actually managed to destroy a large portion of the Yugoslav fuel storage uh, facilities that were used to fuel these vehicles. Not only these tanks, but pretty much all of the military vehicles being used by the Yugoslavian military during the Axis invasion in 1941. As a result, the Yugoslav army only lasted about three or four days before eventually day two ended up surrendering to the Axis powers. And the Germans ended up ca capturing a vast majority of the Skoda SIP slash T-32 tanks. Most of these vehicles were captured and attacked because they simply ran out of fuel. Because the Luftwaffe, as I mentioned earlier, the Luftwaffe had managed to destroy most of, Yugoslav's, of Yugoslavia's um, fuel storage facilities during the initial invasion and so that's basically it for this tank this is one of the this is my favorite yugoslav tank of the second world war mostly because it is basically the first stug to be used in combat i mean this is like a smaller version of the german stug tank that we will later see in 1943 and 1944 but this tank was designed in 1935 to 1938 so that's basically it for this this vehicle Now, another vehicle that was used by the Yugoslav army was a rare improvised armored fighting vehicle or infantry support vehicle. 
and that weapon is the Yugoslav Berlet UNL-35. Now the Berlet UNL-35 is actually the name of the chassis that this vehicle was based on. It was based on a UNL-35, uh, you know, a UNL-35 transportation truck. And this vehicle, the truck was, these trucks were originally built in the 1930s. But towards the end of the 30s, the Yugoslav military needed some infantry support vehicles. So in the years just before World War II, about 1936, 1938, Yugoslavia knew that the war was coming, so they began building these improvised or cheaply produced infantry support vehicles. And the, the these Berlet UNL-35s, their main armament was one 37mm Pultex SA-18 short gun. This was the same gun that was used on the Renault FT-17 tanks during World War I. Now, Yugoslavia actually did have some FT-17 tanks in service, but they were mostly used as rear guard tanks as they were pretty outdated by the time of the Second World War. But many of their 37mm guns were still useful, and so these Berlet UNL-35s were mostly fitted with the 37mm SA-18 shotgun. But there were some of these vehicles that were fitted with one 7.92mm Swallows machine gun. The Swallows machine gun was the standard machine gun of Austria-Hungary during World War I. Um, Yugoslavia inherited these machine guns, but rechambered them for the 7.92mm Mauser cartridge, which was the standard cartridge used by the Yugoslavian army during the Second World War. The UNL-35 had an armor thickness of between 10 and 15 millimeters estimate, and its speed was between 40 and 60 miles per hour. It was a pretty fast, improvised, or cheaply made infantry fighting vehicle. And the vehicle had a crew of four to six, so this vehicle also doubled as a as an armored personnel carrier. But it it can only carry about four additional passengers. Now this vehicle is extremely rare, less than 20 of these vehicles were produced, and most of them were either destroyed or captured during the German invasion in 1941, making it one of the rarer vehicles used by the Yugoslav army during the Second World War. Now, after 1941 and after Yugoslavia was annexed, a variety of different anti-Axis insurrection groups rose up during the war. You had three primary groups. You had the you had the Communist Partisans, also known as Tito's Partisans, led by Marshal Tito, who would later become the leader of the leader of Yugoslavia after World War II. You had Drazaki's Partisans, which was another partisan group led by a man named Drazaki, who was a Serb uh, nationalist. He led his own uh, group of partisan fighters. And then you had these Serbian Chechniks. The Chechniks were a mixed bag some fought against the Germans and some fought alongside the Axis powers during the occupation of Yugoslavia and during the communist uprising in 1944-1945. So these were the insurrection groups that you had during the occupation years of 1941 through 1945. Now, during the occupation, Tito's partisans actually designed a variety of improvised armored fighter vehicles, including homemade tanks and upgraded modification tanks or modifications of existing vehicles. And the first vehicle designed by Tito's partisans was a partisan armored car. Now this vehicle has no name. It is just listed as an improvised armored car designed by Tito's partisan sometime between 1941, just after the after Yugoslavia collapsed, and 1942. Now, Believe it or not, this vehicle was actually captured by the German army in 1943, intact. It is one of the rarest vehicles used by Tito's partisans during the occupation years of Yugoslavia between 1941 and 1945. Now, another vehicle that the Yugoslav partisans built or modified in this case were M3 A3 light tanks which were modified into a self-propelled tank destroyer or a light tank destroyer. These vehicles were known as the M3 um, 7.5 centimeter pack 40s. These were modifications of the American M3 light tank that were made in 1944 by various Yugoslav partisan groups. Now you may be wondering how did M3 light tanks end up in Yugoslavia? Well during the Battle of North Africa between 1939 and 1943, M3 light tanks were actually supplied to the British before the Americans entered World War II. And when the Americans entered the Battle of North Africa around 1942, they also brought M3 light tanks with them. 
Now, many of these tanks were actually captured by the Germans in North Africa, and when the Germans and the Italians pulled out of North Africa in 1943, they brought many of these captured M3 light tanks back to Yugoslavia, because they still controlled Yugoslavia, and they also brought them back to Italy and occupied Greece. Many of these M3 light tanks, these ex-American and ex-British M3 light tanks, were actually taken or captured by Yugoslav partisans between 1943 and 1944, and they were modified by fitting them with a 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank gun, which was one of the standard German anti-tank weapons of the Second World War. Now, the armor thickness of these vehicles was still 9.5 to 63.5 millimeters, and these vehicles still had a speed of uh, 36 miles per hour and a crew of four, but these vehicles mounted with the 75mm gun gave them the ability to take on much larger tanks. Keep in mind the M3 Stuart was not good at taking on larger German tanks like the Panzer 3, 4, or the Panther, or especially not the Tiger or Tiger 2, but the 75mm Pac-40 gun gave them the ability to knock out these larger tanks, and these vehicles were used by the Yugoslav partisans from 1944 until 1945. Now, let's get on to the next vehicle class. Another variation of the M3 or modification of the M3 made by the Yugoslav partisans were M3 anti-aircraft tanks or flak panzers. These were M3 tanks that were fitted with German flak Veling 30 and flak Veling 38s. Those were 20 millimeter auto cannons that were used by the German army as anti-aircraft weapons. The Yugoslav partisans would slap some of these uh, 20 millimeter auto cannons on several of the M3 a3 chassis that were captured from the German and Italian occupation forces in Yugoslavia, and they were used as cheap anti-aircraft weapons and anti-infantry weapons um, by Yugoslav partisans during the years 1944 and 1945. So these are just some of the rare modification tanks that were produced by the Yugoslav partisans, and the final modification tank was the Samoa 40. The Samoa 40 is a modification of a French medium tank. Now, the Samoa 40 was a modification of the old French Samoa S-35. The Samoa S-35 was a French medium tank that was built in 1935 and served the French army during the fall of France in 1940, but also during the battles of Belgium in 1940 also. The Yugoslav partisans managed to capture some of these Samoa S-35s from the German and Italian occupation forces, and these S-35s were modified by fitting them with a 75mm Pac-40 anti-tank gun, just like those M3 stewards that I mentioned earlier. The Samoa 40s, as they were called, were used by Drazakis of Yugoslav partisan forces between 1943 and 1944. Uh, eventually, they were abandoned by 1945 as the Soviet Union would later supply these partisan forces with T-34-85 tanks and SU-100 uh, tank destroyers. And so that's pretty much it for these modified medium heavy tanks or medium tanks of the Yugoslav partisan army. Now, let's talk about some of the homemade tanks of the independent state of Croatia or Croatia. Now, after Germany annexed Yugoslavia in 1941, they had created two puppet states, the independent state of Croatia and the independent state of Montenegro. These were two German puppet states that were created in the former Yugoslavia. They also had several other smaller states, but the independent state of Croatia was the one that produced some of its own improvised armored fighting vehicles. So let's go into that. The first um, Croat vehicle that was built in the occupied Yugoslavia was the Croatian Lorraine Panzerkampfwagen 1 Fusion. Now, this was actually a fusion of the Lorraine, the French Lorraine 37L tractors fused with components from the German Panzerkampfwagen 1 or Panzer 1. These were light, these were improvised light reconnaissance tanks that were designed in 1943. Now, these vehicles were fitted with Panzer I turrets, which themselves were fitted with two 7.92 millimeter MG-13 machine guns. These vehicles had an armored thickness of 7 to 13 millimeters and had a speed of 22 miles per hour or 35 kilometers per hour and had a crew of between three and four. Now, the Lorraine L-37 was originally an artillery tractor that was used by the French army in the years before and during World War II. And when Germany annexed most of Northern France, they had captured a large number of these Lorraine tractors. The Germans also made modifications of these vehicles into improvised tank destroyers. They also gave many of these Lorraine tractors to the independent state of Croatia, which was formed around 1943, 1944. And the Croatians were 
modify many of these Lorraine tractors using components and spare parts from broken down Panzer I light tanks. And this is one of the examples. Another Croatian tank that was designed during World War II was the Croat M1442 Panzer 38T combination. Now this was a rare modification. This is what happens. This is what happened when Croatians would take uh, broken down Italian made M1542 medium tanks and they would, they would fuse them with components or spare parts from the old Czech Panzer 38T. The Panzer 38T was a Czech light tank that was produced around 1936 to 1937. When Germany annexed Czechoslovakia in 1938, they inherited all of the Panzer T-38s or Panzer 38Ts that were serving in the old Czech army. Now, during the invasion of Yugoslavia in 1941, many of the Panzer, uh, Panzer 38Ts were stationed in, in occupied Yugoslavia, and many of the spare parts were left behind were given to the independent state of Croatia. Croatia also inherited a large number of Italian tanks. So in 1942-1943, the independent state of Croatian military or militias began fusing um, M1542 chassis with turrets and spare parts from the Czech Panzer 38T. Now these vehicles had a main armament of one 37mm KWK 38T L47.8 37 millimeter anti-tank guns or tank guns. The armor thickness of these vehicles varied between 42 and 50 millimeters depending on the um, the chassis of the M15-42 or the turret or other spare parts from the Czech Panzer 38T. And these vehicles had a speed of 24 miles per hour or, or 38 kilometers per hour and a crew of four. So this is one of the rare Croatian modification tanks or fusion tanks that were created by the independent state of Croatia between 1942 and 1944. Another rare modification tank or improvised tank designed by the Croats was the Panzerkampfwagen Schul. The Schul Panzer, as it was called, was an improvised training and reconnaissance tractor tank that was designed sometime between 1942 and 1943. Now, this is is one of the rarer independent Croat designs that were designed during the Second World War. Its main armament was either one 7.92 MG-13 or MG-34 light machine gun, but there were some variations that were fitted with a 37mm Pac-36 anti-tank gun as its main armor. The armor thickness of the shul was the thickness of the shul was between five and ten millimeters, and it had a speed of 22 miles per hour and a crew of four. So this is one of the rarer improvised tanks that were produced by the independent state of Croatia during the Second World War. Only about five or six of these were ever built, and they were used during the final battles in Yugoslavia between 1944 and 1945. And I'm assuming that neither of these vehicles survived World War II, as I don't see them in any of the tank museums in Croatia or even in Serbia for that for example. Another rare improvised tank is the Osijek. I think I pronounced that wrong. The Osijek, also known as the Ustasha tank. This was a rare improvised training and reconnaissance tank, also from 1942-1943. This weapon was designed by a man named Ozijic, or Ozijic, or Ozijic. I pronounced that wrong. I can't speak Croatian, so uh, this was a improvised tank series. This was a series of improvised training and reconnaissance tractor tanks. Now, these vehicles had a main armament of one 20 millimeter Italian-made Brita Model 35 anti-aircraft auto cannon, but there were some versions that were fitted with two 7.92 millimeter machine guns. These vehicles also had an armor thickness of somewhere between five and 10 millimeters, but some other sources state that the armor thickness could have been as high as 15 millimeters. These vehicles had a speed of between 22 and 24 miles per hour, and they had a crew of between four and six. Now, these vehicles were originally designed as cheap training tanks in order to train some of the militiamen in the independent state of Croatia. These were Eustasha militia, and they were some of the pro-German collaborators in the occupied state of Yugoslavia. Uh, they did participate in many of the battles, especially in 1944 and 1945. And these vehicles seem to have disappeared also. They were most likely destroyed in combat with the various anti-German uh, partisan groups operating in Yugoslavia. And Croatia also produced a number of improvised armored cars, but these vehicles 
don't really have any names, so I only have uh, images of one of them. And these were improvised armored cars built on the chassis of old French um, utility vehicles, you know. After Germany annexed France in 1940, they gave the pro-German puppet states of Croatia and the pro puppet state of Montenegro um, a large number of old captured French equipment that includes old French tanks, old French artillery, and old French utility vehicles that includes old French trucks and artillery tractors. The Croats would modify many of these vehicles into improvised armored cars, and they would serve during the last days of the Second World War in Yugoslavia, as both Germany and their allies, along with the puppet states of, the, of Croatia, would eventually collapse under the, in the, under the weight of the um, Allied powers, especially both the Soviet Union and Great Britain, who both entered Yugoslavia at different times between 1944 and 1945. And that's basically it. These were the tanks of Yugoslavia from World War II. Of some of the rare tanks that were used before the Second World War, like the SIP slash T-32 um, light tank destroyer, and some of the improvised tanks, you know, that I've showed you from both the anti-German um, Yugoslav partisan groups and the pro-German Croatian forces and the occupied Yugoslavia. So which of these homemade tanks did you like the most? Or which of these rare tanks did you like the most? If you ask me, my favorite tanks were the Skoda SIP slash T-32 um, self-propelled tank destroyer, and my favorite improvised tank would be the um, the uh, Panzer Kaffwagen Schul. You know, I always thought the Schul was an interesting Croat improvised tank from the Second World War. So what are your opinions? Put them in the comments section below, and until next time, this was J-Man Time, signing off.